Avoid routinely telling clients to stay on course and rebalance in the unprecedented market crash predicted this year that will cause stocks to drop by up to 90%. This isn't going to work. The market will continue to drop. Rich people will lose the most. People will lose money and, financial advisors will need protection to prevent their clients from hitting them, Dent said during the podcast. Dent argues that the US economy has already lost its mojo. He says the recession has just begun. It's a necessary evil, he states, claiming that recessions are a good thing, a deep clean, that clears the decks for the next eruption. Listen to the full podcast to understand what's going on for the house, stock, and global market. Are we facing biggest market bubble in the history? Please follow us on YouTube and open your notifications for further podcasts. Enjoy. So, few questions here, and let me play devil's advocate. Okay, but first, uh, you see a total of a 90% correction in equities, correct? I correct. see my target. Now, this is best estimate. Yeah, 86% from top to bottom. We already peaked in January 4th on the S&P and November 22nd on the NASDAQ. I see 86% to get to the bottom of the S&P a few years from now, and 92% for the NASDAQ. So yes, in that 80 to 90% range. Again, you have to go back all the way to 1929 to 32 when we saw an 89% crash in the Dow. Let me ask you, okay, but let me play devil's advocate now. We have midterm elections, then we have the election. If your timeline is correct, don't you think they will do any, everything in their power, right? Because how do you win an election? You can't have a weak stock market. You can't have high inflation. You definitely can have a recession. So wouldn't they do everything in their power to avoid this scenario? Could you not see them yes, raising? Yes, they already did it. What, you, what I said from the beginning is key. I've been waiting for them to get caught in their own trap. What they did was they, they've been stimulating ever since two, early 2009. You know, and every time it slows, they just up it exponentially. They printed more money just in the last two years of COVID than they did in all the cumulative 13 years before that. So they've been escalating stimulus. The problem is they overreacted so much to COVID, which to me, you don't need to overreact to. Everybody can understand that you get a huge virus that makes a lot of people sick and closes down some businesses, that the economy is going to slow. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with the economy and somebody made a mistake. It's just a natural event. No, they know they, they have to keep the economy going no matter. So they overreacted $10 trillion of stimulus in two years, 50% of GDP to the point now that they have to tighten. They force themselves in a tightening cycle. And the difference between me and the government here is I'm saying the economy is so weak that this tightening is going to fail faster than they think. This tightening is not going to last long because the economy is not going to react well to it because it is so much weaker. They think they're mistaking all this stimulus for the economy's growing again. This has only been stimulus. It's the only reason we've been growing since 2009. But if they can't, if the tightening... You know, if they're going to reverse course on the tightening and QE starts up again and the money printing starts up again, doesn't that keep everything? Doesn't that just keep the good times rolling then? No. Let me tell you why. If they suddenly tightening and they suddenly say, oops, we shouldn't have tightened. What is it saying? The economy is really weak. So it causes people to doubt the economy even more. So first of all, yes, they will do this. I'm saying because they've gone in this direction, it's it's hard for them to change so suddenly so soon without showing a bad signal. And they won't, governments don't do that anyway. By the time they react, it'll be too late. What I'm looking for, and here's where you'll see if I'm wrong, okay? I'll just tell you why I'm wrong. If we see, why I could be wrong. If we see another wave in stocks go down similar to this one, and the next stop on the NASDAQ is 7,000 something instead of 10,000 something. People are gonna know we're in a serious crash. People, we're gonna move into a serious recession and then it's gonna be hard to stop the momentum. I think that we could be starting that crash soon and that's what catches the government off guard. And by time they react, it's too late. And, And you gotta remember, if they've been stimulating nonstop for 13 years and we keep getting a weaker economy and that has been what's happened, okay? Ever since, two, ever since the 2002, and they keep stimulating more and the economy keeps falling to new lows, the stock market. And, and so, so people are going to start to see this isn't working. You can't keep a dead economy going because it takes more and more stimulus. The perception, the perception is that 
the economy is is robust though. So let's take it a step yeah. back. Say if they, okay, play this out for me, explain this to me. Say if they had not started tightening, right? And they just kept printing money, kept QE going. How would have that played out? Like, couldn't they have said, well, let's just keep this perception, this illusion up, right? Keep the good times rolling. How, how like, couldn't you keep that going on or what would happen? Okay, well, well whatever, what, what, what changed in the last year? What changed? Just think, what's the one thing in the economy that suddenly changed? Inflation went from 1% to 9.1% and zero to 60. That's what kicked their butts, okay? That's what stopped this thing. How do you think you can print this escalating print more money and not create inflation? The only reason it didn't otherwise, the economy was weak and the demographics were slowing and that kept a lid of inflation. What I'm, what I'm saying is they made, a, since they don't know what they're doing and they don't understand the damn economy because they all, people never run a business or had sex for that matter, all these economists, they don't understand what's going on. They made a mistake overreacting. To COVID, okay. and now that has called their hand, forced okay. them to tighten. And if they turn around too quick on tightening, it's going to send a signal that the economy is even weaker than anybody thinks. That said, There's no way to win it. Yeah. That said, I'd love to get your thoughts on the Inflation Reduction Act uh, that's now going to go onto President Biden's desk to sign. <laughs> what is it? This is a long term <laughs> policy, this is a short term crisis. They, they got sudden inflation because they created the biggest bubble in financial assets in history. Financial assets, anybody, any young person today has no chance of investing in retirement where every market from bonds to stocks to real estate is so overvalued that at best it can go sideways for decades to come. At worst, it goes down and you lose money. We need to deflate this financial asset bubble so that things go back. How is it? What's the biggest problem in our economy? Young people can't afford to buy a house. You know what a house was, an everyday house was 20 years ago? $100,000, $120,000. You know what it is now? $420,000. What does that do to your standard of living if you just got married and had two kids? Can't afford to buy a house. And if you do, you can't afford to buy anything else. And interest rates are artificially low when they go back to normal levels because government's pushed down, then all these mortgages and stuff are going to cost more. They have they have basically we've been living in an artificial economy. You don't get something for nothing. You can pump it up for a while. Hey, I tell people it's this simple. You, if I want to feel good today, I can feel good. I don't care how bad I feel. All I got to do is take heroin or cocaine or something or 10 cups of coffee and I'll be up. Does that work? Is that healthy? No. We've been doing this for years, living on artificial stimulus, stretching an economy past when people needed to spend money. The baby boomers were overspending their money and buying all their houses in 2007. I predicted that 20 some years in my newsletters and books before it happened. And well, then we went into the great crash of 2008 and these people panicked and they don't realize they need to recalibrate the economy to make the best of a slow economy rather than hyping it up with artificial financial drugs. Well, we're, that's where we're, I call it the markets on crack. To your point Not about healthy. housing, to your point about housing, you know, uh, someone argued that that's why a house right now is the greatest commodity you can have. Would you agree with that? No, it's the worst commodity because they're going to go mark my words on this and shoot me if I'm wrong. Next few years, housing in the United States is going to go down 50%. You know what? People said that couldn't happen. It already went down 34%, and I predicted that, okay? Already went down 34%, more than in the Great Depression, not because the economy was worse than the Great Depression. No, remember, it's because we didn't have a bubble back then. You couldn't buy a house with no money down, with, with, with damn near zero rates and speculate like you could. In the roaring 20s, in that bubble boom, a house you had to put 50% down and the most longest mortgage you could get is five years with a balloon payment. That's what's different now. So housing had a, a big crash, but of course they pushed it out of it. The next crash, mark my words, 50%. Most people who got a mortgage in the last decade are going to be underwater. Banks are going to be underwater on loans. And then this thing's going to be a big mess. And they're finally going to have to write down loans. So what I tell people, here's the classic thing I get when somebody hears my prayer. Say, oh, Harry, I got two houses. One of them's all paid for. And the other one I got, I just got a 90% mortgage. I'm going to sell the one with the mortgage. I'm like, no. Sell the one that you got all the equity and take all your money out because it's yours. 
keep the woman the mortgage because at some point, banks are going to have to write down these mortgages because they gave people mortgage they couldn't sustain. At some point, you got to write down the debt instead of just having more stimulus and keeping the crazy game going.